Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to a very, very special cast. This is game one of day one of my Team Dignitas week. Now, for those of you who are wondering, hey, what's going on here? This logo is normally down in the bottom right. Well, let me give this a little bit of an intro. This week, every single day, I am going to be covering one of Team Dignitas's players. I'm going to be casting quite a few games of theirs. I'm going to be releasing them all on the day, so you can give them a watch through and get to grips with what the players are like their play styles and generally just fall in love with them because they are all absolutely awesome so obviously big up thanks to Team Dignitas for working with me on this I think it's a really great project and I hope all of you enjoy it and well let's introduce today's star it is of course Dream the red Plotus player in the lower right position he's playing up against Aristio the blue Zerg player in the top right the map is in Tomb Valley and as you can see Dream is going for a pylon on the low ground so he's going to be fast expanding that is all very, very normal. Meanwhile, the Zerg player should be going for a 15-16 pull into a quick hatch, into a relatively quick third base at about 4 to 4 minutes 20. So that's really the early game setup. So let me just say, if anyone does want to know more about Team Dignitas or anything like that, one, there'll be links in the description, or just Google Team Dignitas. Uh, if you want to go straight to their URL, it's www.team-dignitas.org. And, well, for those of you who don't know about Dignitas, let me just give them a little bit of, well, let me give you a little bit of info about them. They started up, they're a UK based pro gaming team. They started in September 2003, which is nearly 10 years ago now, amazingly. Um, well, nine years. But, well, they started off as two battlefield teams, which merged together to become a very, very successful team. And since then, have been growing bigger and bigger. They are now probably the biggest gaming team in the UK, almost certainly. They are an international player across multiple games League of Legends, Dota 2, StarCraft 2 loads of FPS's so they are big they are well known and they are pretty damn awesome so um, yeah that's a bit about Dignitas if you also follow them on Twitter and all that sort of thing at Team Dignitas if you want to follow Dream as well it's at Dignitas Dream so do check those people out because they are pretty awesome Anyway, as you can see here, let's get back to this game. Aris Aristio is going for his third base first. So he's taking that just because the probe here from Dream is denying the natural. This is, again, from Dream, good. He's just being irritating. It's annoying to Aristio. Taking the third base, that's absolutely fine as well because, let's face it, you're going to take it anyway. Might as well take it first. The probe on its way over. Now, as you can see, it was a forge first. So cannons are a potential threat here. That is why we see Aristio going for these four Zergans, trying to find out where that probe is. Luckily, he didn't get cannon rushed, and for the time being, this is looking like we're going to be setting up to be a pretty macro game. That hatchery going down at 3.56, so really quite early, before the 4-minute mark, which is obviously great, great fun to watch, and really just means that both these players are going as economically focused as possible. The two gas coming down here from Dream, which is a normal follow-up. The first cannon is down. This wall-up is actually really quite nice. Um, there's a small gap here, and obviously the main is a bit unprotected, but... It's a wide ram to get covered on in tomb. They are in the vertical spawn positions. It's not possible to spawn horizontally. And Dream with this probe over here. I wonder what that's going to do. The Zergling is just chilling outside the base. That's exactly what all Zerg players should be doing. Is thinking, hey, where can I stick that Zergling to make sure I am safe? Make sure there's no pushes coming or anything like that. The overlord placement, obviously good as well. You just want to get this overlord through here to get a look at the gas, get a look of anything else. You can also leave it down here just to sacrifice in later. That's a good thing to do. Now, Dream, he's got so many options available to him. Basically, he can do anything from, say, a, a mortal sentry all-in to a 5 to 9 gate push to going for a stargate play. There's lots of... There's basically lots of options, and really the way you deal with those options as Zerg are very different, and that's why you need to be in a position where you've scouted out as best you can and why the overall placement is so important. A drone transfer going on down here, down to the third base. The reason you see the drone transfer is because you're taking the third rather than the natural. If you're taking the natural first, then you sometimes wouldn't bother doing that because you just rally unit, rally the drones down there, but of course you can't rally to the third. It'd be a bit dangerous coming up front of your base. But looking down here... What else have we got down? Well, we've got plus one ground weapons coming down here for Dream. Aristio is, well, just happily droning up, still getting his first two gas. Quite an early gas, actually. Just, it was probably at about 40-ish supplies, so... Again, usually you get to see that about 45, 50 supplies, so clearly gearing up to try and deal with something. As you can see, this Overlord is able to see one of the gas, can't see the other one, so he knows that it is only two gas at the moment, or at most three, which is good. We've got two, three more gateways being added on here by Dream, so that's four gate, five gate, how many are we going to get? Five gate is a very good two base play, and gives you an awful lot of potential aggression. Six gate, are we going to see any more? 
That probe is still sitting there ominously. Are we going to see seven gate? Any more, seriously, any more dream? And you're just going to be zealot rushing to the third, which of course I've seen done, and it works really, really well indeed. Anyway, great from Aristio. He's getting up a spine crawler at both of his bases. He's also getting up his roach warren. Now Roach Run started a good 20 seconds ago, so just before the 7 minute mark, which is good timing for it. Try and get the Evo Chamber as well, because otherwise you can run into a bit of problems. And I just love this from Dream, he's just like, one proxy pylon clearly is not enough. I'm going to be taking all of the proxy pylons, as many as possible. These Zergans, they may scalp them, but they are not going to be able to deal with all of them before my warp in start hitting. The plus one is about to finish up, the warp gates are about to be morphed in, and well, that's when we start getting an awful lot of fun. Now this one pro pylon has been taken down, the second one is going to get spotted as well. This one up the back, I very much doubt will get spotted, but here comes the warp in of units. We've got quite a few stalkers here, they need to be careful, although speed isn't done yet. Roaches are on the way out for Aristio, and well, we've got some aggression coming in. This third base is going to be the focal point of the attack. If it goes down, we'll Zerg players are in massive amounts of problems if they lose their third base. These stalkers do have to be a little bit careful that if they get surrounded by Zergings, they could be in problems. And obviously behind this, of course, just more pylons being built, more warpings getting ready, a pylon coming right outside the base, in range of the spine crawler though and the roaches, so that is almost certainly going to be forced to get cancelled for these stalkers. They are doing a good job here. Zealots are reinforcing behind this. Meanwhile, we see Aristio getting an awful lot of zergings out, a couple of roaches, and of course, if he gets too many zergings and not enough roaches, then the zealots obviously are going to be incredibly powerful, and if he gets too many roaches, then the stalkers are going to wreck him. So this is pretty tough to defend, but so far, this is a good defense going on. Spine crawlers are moving forward, two more on the way down. More Zerglings on their way out, and of course, once speed hits in as well, that is going to make things a lot easier to defend for the Zerg player, because you're just going to be able to surround those Stalkers and deal with them a lot more effectively. But obviously, these Spine Crawlers are helping massively. The Roaches really, really being effective against the Zealots. The Queen even getting in on the action. Needs to be careful not to lose the Queen, though, but the Queen does go down. That's going to hurt the macro of the Zerg player. Behind this Dream, playing really, really well, in my opinion. He's lost slightly more resources than that of his opponent, but he's very, very wisely pulling back, moving forward, pulling back, moving forward, poking and prodding, never overcommitting, never losing his old army, but he is still keeping on the pressure. I mean, behind this, he's just getting in a couple more units, getting some sentries in. The sentries are the only thing really missing from this army, which he will need to start getting as the Zerg force gets larger in order to split it up. Those Zergling speed, though, really becoming effective. Those Zealots are trying to engage, but that force field didn't really help them get it because obviously the roaches can still kite them away and of course Dream, he's still committing with this push, he's still trying to do as much damage as possible, but in terms of the work account, well, obviously this push has really stunted the Zerg's player's work account, while Dream is just happily macroing behind this, and we usually you see when a Zerg player is up to this stage of the game, They'll be obviously trying to get up to the 70 plus drone mark. Dream though, he's on equal workers as his opponent. He's done a good amount of damage. He hasn't lost too much more, only a little bit. But the real harm he's done is of course keeping that drone count as low as possible, which is just going to be absolutely brilliant because Lair only just about to finish up. The double Evo chamber on their way down now. Behind this Dream picking up the rocks, looking like he's going to go and take a third base. Building a second proton cannon just to help his defense. He's in a nice spot though. He's got all four gas up. He's getting down a couple more sentries, getting a third proton cannon now. These Roaches and Zerglings are going to go and try and find all the pylons. And now, this is quite interesting. We do have a Spire on its way down here for Aristio, so we are going to be seeing some Mutalisks almost certainly. That's the only reason to get it this early. Off of four gas, so not a huge amount. And I really, really hope that it's not an overcommittal to Mutas, because if you get too many, it can run into the problems. And now, that pylon is going to go unscouted. It's just out of reach of that watchtower, so that's great play. But we've got some counter-aggression coming in now from Aristio, who is nearly 30 supply ahead of his opponent. In terms of the work account, he is starting to pull ahead now, but he's nowhere near where he'd want to be at the 12-minute mark normally. Now, looking here, we've got the complete wall of coming down. Some force fields just missing the mark there, but just preemptively making sure they don't go. Three more warp gates being added on here. Obviously, the robotics facility about to finish up, so that's starting to tech up in order to get Colossus out, because, well, that is what you need late game. In terms of upgrades, you've got 1-1 one, one on the way out for the moment for the Zerg player. Plus one ground weapons done. No additional upgrades coming down from Dream yet. He's just focusing on teching up to get the Observer out, obviously then going into Colossus, almost certainly. The fourth base on its way down now. I think this is a great move by the Zerg player. Seen this, seen obviously the fact that, well, hang on, this third base almost certainly getting taken due to the wall off. So I'm going to get one more base to stay a base up, which is precisely what you want to be doing. 
We have the Robotics Bay on its way down now for Dream as well. Looking up in terms of the work account, 78 to 55. So the Zo player, now where he wants to be in terms of the work account, in terms of how many units he's got, or how many droids he's got on the field. He's going into kind of the more late game stages. Needs to start thinking about how he's going to tech pass through these muters. Getting 7 up now, and that's slightly delayed. It is probably going to get spotted by that Observer, although there's an Overseer there. So if Aristio is paying attention, he will be able to put that Observer off, but Dream manages to get it through. The one thing I'm really noticing a lack of from the Zo player is an infestation. Pet. It's only just starting now, of course, uh, nearly 14 minutes, that's quite late. A lot of Zerg players will be looking to start getting their hive at this point, but of course a lot of early pressure from Dream did knock off the timings and delay everything by a couple of minutes, so that is still probably alright for the time being. Looking up here, more spine crawlers coming down, more spine crawlers down on the ramp, spine crawlers around here. This is just a very defensive turtling play in order to protect this fourth base and also his third from any kind of run buys. We've got these muters poking and prodding in through here, but of course a lot of stalkers there ready to deal with. The stalkers don't have blink though, so these muters can utilize the fact there's a small cliff there, but well, stalkers warping in expertly here by Dream and probe's getting crawled near instantly, so very, very little damage being done here by the Zerg player. Only two workers killed at the moment and of course quite a few muters getting taken down and if we look at the loss tab only 400 resources loss difference between them in favour of the Zerg player at the time being these spine crawlers moving around trying to get into a good defensive force. If we look at the work account still staying up basically Aristio is replacing the spine crawlers, the drones as he makes the spine crawlers. Hive is a quarter done as well. The Spire obviously done as well so straight teching into Broodlords and well, once the Broodlords start coming out and that's really when we need to start to see Dream teching up towards getting out the Mothership because of course the Vortex is going to be essential. He's also going to need some Archons out so he needs to either get a Templar Archives or a Dark Templar Shrine in order to get those Archons in order to Vortex. The Broodlords send the Archons in and use their splash damage against air to kill them all off super quick and efficiently in order to deal with late game Zerg and that's really the way Protoss do deal with late game Zerg. Now looking here, plus two Protoss ground weapons on the way, we do have the 1-1 one -one upgrades done for the Zerg and um, no more upgrades surprisingly so I'm surprised that hasn't been a continual upgrade. We do have now have literally as I say that plus two ground weapons coming in and plus one ranged weapons on the way. We do have Infestors, more Infestors on the way, upgraded Spire starting now so that'll be done in about 100 seconds so probably going to be finishing up at around the 18 minute mark which is a good time to start hitting Broodlords maybe for actually late. Extended Thermal Lance only just a quarter done now. Blink nearly finished though. We do have coming out here the Stargate so again this is just getting ready to take up. These pylons are still able to stay alive which I find quite amazing but obviously it's good news for the Protoss player whose oh, entire force is just chilling down here. The Mutalisks are they even still on the field? They are. Where are those Muters hanging? They are just chilling around doing very little. I mean these Muters have been highly ineffective whole game in my opinion. They were shut down incredibly well by Dream. He scouted them effectively he saw them with the Observer, so they haven't been a threat at any point to him. The plus two Protoss ground weapons just finishing up now. We do have this nice little force, and I do like this, because this basically means that should the fourth base get taken, or should Aristio Sea Dream push out, as he is doing now, he can come in for that counter-attack. The downside is, though, his main army is going to be a little bit weaker. He's getting up the Corrupt account. His Greatest Spire is only 15 seconds away from completion, so those Broodlords should be coming in to the match shortly. We've got War Prism coming out from Dream. These Roaches and Zerglings are on the way up, but a good blink forward. He may get a couple of kills here if those Roaches don't get away quite quickly. Um, a couple of Zerglings going down here as well. Dream just playing this really quite defensively and those roaches get completely surrounded trying to micro through some of the stalkers do unfortunately go down but all of the roaches are going to get cleaned up and that was a good little engagement there for dream and that puts him quite a long way ahead in terms of the resources lost another warp in from these pylons that were noticed before the fifth base has now just gone down for Arisio it has finished up but I do feel the dream is going to be able to pick that off quite nice and easily the broodlords though are coming in and of course these broodlords are going to be the big threat because we don't have a mothership even started yet the stalker count is very very high though so assuming they can get under there it'll be fine but obviously the infest with fungal growth are going to be actively trying to shut down those stalkers, the spine crawlers as well are a big threat, although the the Colossi with extended thermal lance do outrange them, so the Colossi can start picking those off. What is the Corruptor count like? Well, only one Corruptor. That is a slight mistake in my opinion. The Fleet Beacon on its way down now from Dream. These Stalkers coming up here to pick off the 5th base, which never really got going. Now the only trouble I'm seeing here is Dream doesn't have his own 4th, so that's something that he could be looking to do while he's moving forward. He is at near 200 to 200. He's got a lot of money in the bank. Both players do actually at over a thousand resources, but you'll start banking up money as you get into the late game, because you max out, and then you can't really do much else. Obviously the 5th base picked off by those stalkers. Now Dream just happily moving back and I'm surprised there wasn't any counter attack during this. But obviously in late game it's all about army positioning. You don't want a bad engagement. The Templar Archives on their way down. The War Prism 
Uh, there is already one out. Oh no, it got cancelled apparently. So the War Prism nearly finished up with the resupplies. A great bling forward under those mutualists. They are all going to get taken down incredibly quickly. The Broodlords are a little bit exposed, although the Infestors are coming down underneath. Now obviously those Infestors all with 200 of 200 energy. So they have got a lot of fungal growths in them. The fourth base now being taken by Dream. This is good play by him. Obviously we have the Zerg army moving forward. The Stalker was holding the Watchtower. Unfortunately going to die, but does see a good count on obviously the Broodlords, the entire army there. There are nine Broodlords on the field. A couple more Corruptors coming in now we job the overseers they're ready to deal with the cloak from the mothership but no mothership has been started yet the fleet beacon is finished so dream is going to be able to start that whenever he sees fit but here we go we've got a bit of an engagement coming in here and well there's a lot of action those corruptors i'll try to pick off the colossi quickly but with only four of them the stalkers are able to pick them off some blink forwards try and pick off some broodlords a couple go down another good blink forward the fungal growths hit though but not before a lot of broodlords are getting taken out this is an amazing engagement for dream and Aricio is really on the ropes now he's going to lose all of his broodlords at an incredibly early stage in this map as you can see here nearly double the resources lost from Aricio compared to dream right now and Dream here has got momentum and he's starting up his mothership behind this. And what I really like is Dream just stopping and waiting. And I think that is a good move in this situation because there was a lot of spine crawlers down here. His Colossi count isn't huge. He's only at three. He's got his mothership on the way. Why not just wait to engage effectively? Of course, Aricio is going to be panicked after that, losing him without a mothership there either. The Dark Shrine on its way down. And, well, that basically means the DTs are going to be on the field. Some Zealots warping in here. Of course, they're getting taken down quite easily. Upgrades 2-1 for the Zerglings compared to, well, plus 3 Protoss ground weapons on their way. And plus 1 Protoss ground armor is finished. A whole load of High Templar warping in. We should see them morph into Archons. There we go. There's 3 of them on the way. These Pylons getting picked off by these Speedlings. A lot of Speedlings actually around the side here. And those Stalkers will have to be a bit careful. The, Col the Colossi will help deal with that. The 5th base trying to get retaken by the Zerg player at the moment. But, of course, Dream has his 4th up and running. Good number of cannons there, although the mineral line is slightly exposed. We'll wait and see whether the Zerg player does go for a run by, but for the moment, Aristio is going to have to be thinking about his fourth base. Those stalkers blinking up to check on the fifth. Going to force another council, and well, in we go. We've got more units going for this. The mothership is three quarters done. The Broodlord count not particularly high at all. Only five of them on the field at the moment. The Infestors get some good fungal growth off, and of course, that is allowing the Broodlords to close up the distance deal some damage for free which is always a good time if we see here this is leveling out the resources lost nearly 20,000 resources lost by Aristio to the 12,000 of Dream. Dream still pushing for those and those Broodlords overextended so much there and as you can see those Stalkers are able to deal so much damage right now that is of course never something you want as a Zerg player but with the fungal growths with the remaining Broodlords Dream's army is taking a bit of a pounding he is still ahead in terms of how many resources he's lost but he's having to go into full retrieve mode the Colossi do stay up, two of them, one did fall unfortunately, but he's in an okay spot because most importantly, his mothership is on the field, that means that if he gets a good number of Archons out, gets a good Vortex on these Broodlords, then he is going to be in an absolutely A situation, meanwhile this War Prism has warped in a couple of TTs down into the main base, they are doing some nice damage although Detection is there unfortunately with the Spore Crawler so they were shut down a bit prematurely. This War Prism also going to get taken out by the Corruptors now. There's no real way to save that when it's already going. But another DT warping in. And, well, there's Overseers everywhere. So, unfortunately, that is unlikely to be too successful. But, well, it's going to go for it. Obviously, there isn't much in terms of units here. But the Queen and Spine Crawler are going to basically instantly heal that DT, unfortunately. But good thinking by Dream trying to go for that. We do have more Archons warping in. We do have the plus two Flyer Attack as well as the plus three Ranged Attack coming down for the Zerg player. And plus one Air Armor already finished. We do have the Mothership moving forward now. In terms of upgrades for the Protoss, 3-1 plus 2 Protoss ground armor on the way. Another War Prism on its way down. This 5th base has never been able to really go down successfully. And Dream's starting his own 5th base now as well, which basically means the Zerg player is on equal, work on equal base count and actually behind in the work count as well. So that is going to hurt his economy for quite a while. That's Zergling getting picked off by a mass of Stalkers. Possibly a slight overreaction to just one Zergling. But when you want to make sure it's dead, send your entire army. Meanwhile, we've got the Gravatic Drive coming down here for the Protoss player. We've got more Corruptors coming out, more Zerglings coming out, more Spine Crawlers coming out. And the Spine Crawler walls are actually very effective here from Aristio. So that's some good play, although his fifth base has never really seemed to be able to get protected. And obviously, with the Mothership in here, all it's going to take is one good Vortex on the Broodlords, of which there are nine now on the field. One good Vortex with the Archons in there as well. Could run into some problems. These Zerglings going for a two-way multi-prong attack. And, well, nothing there on the wall off. The cannons are there, but unfortunately, there was an awful lot of Zerglings 
going straight into the main base. They could do some good damage, although, as you can see here, more cannons are around. But this is where most of the action is happening. So much damage being done here by Dream. He's picked off those spine crawlers, walls like they're not even there. And is the Vortex going to go down? All the Brutals are clumped up, and he gets all of them. All the Archons go in. That is absolutely perfect there for Dream. He is doing so well. Meanwhile, back here, we've got these Zerglings clearing off pretty much everything. Some Zed is warping in at the main base. There's damage being done. This Vortex should be about to finish up any second. Is another Archon going to gain on the party? Yes, it is. And here we go. Bye bye, Broodlords. They all instantly pop. Some Infested Tones getting knocked down. But with the lack of Broodlords, Dream is in just such a good spot. He's cleaning up most of the aggression here. Just a few Zerglings remaining. But it doesn't matter. All of Aristio's army has now been taken down. All the Broodlords are gone. All the Infestors are gone. And we should see GG any second from the Zerg player. But that counter attack was pretty inspired. The Zergling run by both bases was pretty nice. And Dream takes it just with a perfect Vortex. So guys, this was game one of day one of Dignitas Week. All the rest of Dream's videos are going to be up today. So flick over to my channel and give them a watch. I'm going to be putting it all in a big playlist so it's easy to find. And remember, follow me on Twitter at MaddlesSC2. Follow Team Dignitas, which is at Team Dignitas. And of course, follow Dream, which is at Dignitas Dream. And well, I'll see you at the next video any second. Bye for now, guys.